Good morning, my little friends. I miss you so much. Just so you know that. It's very, very strange how we're living right now and that we're getting church through a TV or a computer. But I want to let you know I'm thinking about you guys every day. And I'm praying that you guys are having a good time doing school differently and that you're enjoying your time being safe at home. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit today about our children's sermon. And this is going to be very different from our story times inside the church when we would gather around the story Bible. But here we go. I want to talk to you about how do we know whether or not something is true or not. Okay? Sometimes we hear things and we wonder what is really true or what is a lie. So I'm going to do a little game. And I want you guys to guess. And I know that you're not going to be able to have me hear your voices. So maybe your mom and dad... Um, or somebody who's watching with you can send me your answers and I want to see what you think. So I'm going to give you two truths and one lie and we're going to see if you can figure it out. Okay? So here you go. I have two cats. I have a garden in my house. And I am 10 years old. So what do you think? Which thing did I say is true and which one isn't true? Okay, two of them are true, one of them isn't. All right, so I'm going to let you just think about that for a minute and then um, I'm going to go on with the rest of my story today. All right, so sometimes people say things and sometimes you say things that are not quite true. Okay, but there is one thing that every single one of us knows is absolutely true beyond a shadow of a doubt, meaning it's absolute and we're not to ever think otherwise, okay? And that is that Jesus rose from the dead to save us. Yep, that's absolutely true. So in the story, after Jesus was crucified and after his friends went to the tomb to find him and he wasn't there, they were sad and they were scared, okay? But then they had to remember that Jesus had told them that he would come back, all right? But they had a hard time believing that, all right? They thought somebody stole him. They didn't understand what was going on. And again, they were scared and they were sad, all right? Their friend left them. But he did come back to see his friends again, all right? He did come in one day where they were all hanging out, having a hard time, and he appeared. All right? And the disciples were overjoyed when they saw him. All right? And what's overjoyed means? It means they were so happy. Okay? And then when Jesus was there in the room with them, he said, Peace be with you. As God has sent me to you, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them, and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. And then he told them something very special. He said, if you forgive anyone's sins, all the things that they do wrong to hurt you or make you sad, their sins will be forgiven. But if you don't forgive them, they are not going to be forgiven. All right? So what does that mean to have the Holy Spirit breathed on you? It means that we are given a special power through God. And because of that, God is trusting us with a special, special job of telling everybody else about what Jesus did. And sometimes, especially these days, sometimes it's hard to believe what's going on. And it's hard to believe what's truth. And it's hard to believe what are lies. But I want you guys to put your hands together. And I want you to pray. All right? And say, dear God, please help me through my faith to understand and to know what is true. Amen. And I miss you guys and I hope to see you very, very soon. And you have a fantastic rest of your week. All right? Bye.